and, and it, it, it ended up becoming to the point where I would overstretch myself. And even if it cost my health, I had to say yes to everyone because my my need to want to be for, for love was greater than my own health, greater than my own depression, greater than my own love and self-love for myself because I so yearn to be accepted by people. And and so so this narrative of, of, of changing our mind is disposing of everything that people have told you and say, I am worthy. And it's not something that you do wake up one day and say, oh, it's going to change. No, baby, it's a constant thing. It's, it's like exercising your body. You got to exercise your mind and say, you know what? I'm worthy. I, I was worth dying for. I, I, am, I am handsome. I am accepted. I am enough. I when oh, that that was actually the greatest thing that I had to learn that I was enough, mm. whether yes or no to you. And 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 I I went through this whole phase of just saying no to people and see who would stay in my life. Mm. Because that's huge. You'll learn a lot when you do that. Mm-hmm. It's huge. But what you were doing, you were putting up boundaries. And mm-hmm. and and I think for a lot of us who have gone through this thing of wanting to be accepted and and approved. Um, approved of is that you don't have boundaries and when you choose to see your own value and worth you begin to start going no I'm not going to do that no I don't have time to do that Um, and and it becomes easier it takes time because I was like you it takes time but it gets a little bit easier when you're able to go I'm not answering that email I, I'm not I'm not taking that phone call because you recognize that if you don't take care of you and put your mask on um, you definitely can't help other people. And it's obvious that in the way that you've been able to help others, that you know how to take care of yourself in doing that. Absolutely. And that's critical. That is so critical for Saul. And I know that for those of us that, and, and, and it's sad that it, that for me, that it took me so long to get to know that. So if I were to impart any wisdom um, uh, unto our listeners, the people that are listening would be the importance of taking care of yourself and the importance of, and I'm still learning that today, right? It's something that you have to practice every day. You have to practice and say, okay, today I have a choice of either taking care of myself or taking care of of what other people want me to do for them and being able to say, it's okay if that doesn't get done. It's okay if, if I say no to this person or this project or this initiative and being able to say, so, so first things is uh, the, the power of your mind. So, so the question was, how did you, what did you, how did you channel your pain? And, and I think, you know, uh, whatever, there's a saying that I, that, that is often said that whatever you feed grows, right? Mm. So if you're, if you're feeding your pain, if you just want to have pity parties, that is what's going to grow. But I, I, I use that pain to be, and I use it as, as power. And there's a Mexican proverb for us all that, that says that they tried to bury us. But what they did not know is that we were seeds. Yes. <laughs> you yes. see, they tried to bury you with their negativity. But what they didn't realize that every time they would try to throw dirt at you, that wasn't just dirt. It was fertilizer, baby. Yes. <laughs> it's like, go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thrive whether you put me in a desert. I'll thrive whether you put wherever you put me at. I, I have learned I'm going to grow. And so you, we have to make a conscious decision to, to say that it, things are not working against you. So think, oh, this is happening to me and, and change that narrative to say this is happening for me. Just mm. that one word, this is happening to me versus this is happening for me. And I believe strongly, first of all, that everything that we go through life, good, bad, that if we make a choice and we say to ourselves, how can we turn this into the most painful situations? How can we turn that into something that is going to fuel our passion and our purpose? And everything that I went through as a child, I use it now as an adult to, to help other people and to be able to empower them and to, for them to be able to find their, their own purpose in life. And, and oftentimes people tell me, oh, Mr. Magdaleno, we want to be just like you. And that, that puts a lot of pressure on me because I said, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> and I, I'm a hot mess, so try to be like me. <laughs> you 
one of the things that, that I that I want to that I share with people is that one is to use the power of our minds, right? The second thing is use your pain as power. Use it to fertilize, to fertilize and, and to ignite whatever purpose you have in your life. And then the third thing that I would say is uh, the importance of defying the urge to quit. And I think a lot of us, especially right now, because of what we're living through, many people have just given up. And it was bad before COVID, but now during COVID, I see a lot of people just giving up and and giving up on their dreams, giving up on their aspirations. And, you know, you know, we always talk about other people about, oh, they're so flaky. Oh, oh, my gosh, don't work with that person because they uh, because they never follow through. But you all. Why don't we ask that ourselves that question? Do you follow through on our dreams. Mm. You see, because we we are the worst at that. You know, we can't stand that about other people. And the reason we can't stand that about other people is because that's who we are. Yep, we see it in ourselves. We see it, and that's how we started our conversation. First of all, we started a conversation by saying you can only see in other people what you see in yourself. And the worst thing is that the worst thing is when we've given up on ourselves. Because we, we talk about everybody giving up on you and not believing in yourself. But the truth is, do we believe in us? That book that has been stored up inside of you, where is it? That master's, that, that bachelor's degree, whatever you have, that that album that you've been trying to put out, whatever it is that you've had in your heart, defy the urge to quit and you will make it. And but you so, know, go on. No, I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm thinking you and I could talk for days. Go on. No, and, and, and that's it, first of all, defying the urge to quit. And, and I think that that is the three main things that I would just love to impart um, to, to, to those listening, um, and please refuse to quit and do not make long-term decisions based on temporary situations. Yes. That's so true because this too shall pass. I mean, yes. one thing that's inevitable is change. And I think mm -hmm. people sometimes give up too quickly when the breakthrough is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, and we're right there. We're right there in our breakthrough. And one thing that I know, I feel like I'm having an Oprah moment right now. It's like, you know, things that I know for sure, right? <laughs> so <laughs> is things that I know for sure that any time that I have been close to a breakthrough or something, the greatest thing in my life, it is always um, preceded by one of the greatest challenges of my life. And every mm -hmm. time I go through something horrible in my life, a, a blessing is always, always a hundred percent. And I, things that I know for sure is that if I wait, there's always something around the corner that was like, ah, I needed to go through that to teach me humbleness. Yes. Ah, I needed to go through that to teach me that I don't need your validation. So you were meant to ignore me for that job. Uh, you were meant to uh, overlook me. You were meant to do that because I no longer depend on your applauses. I don't no longer depend on your validation because I've learned who I am. So, so every time that we go through a test, we are ready to go to that next level. It's almost going to that next grade, right? Going to your master's, you got to pass a test before you can go to the next grade level. And that's true in life. Before you go to the next level, you got to be able to endure that test because you, it, it will ensure that that it polishes you for you to be able to be ready for your blessing. You said a word, and, and that's the thing that I want to leave people on, that as we move into 2021, you cannot give up on yourself. You have to know that everything is in you and that you allow your faith to fuel you, you use your focus, you don't allow those distractions and what people say to inform and determine what your outcome is going to be. And so, Mateo, tell people how they can get in contact with you. What are some ways that they can reach out if they want to know more? Because you've got so much more. This is just a glimpse of your story and what you can tell. So how can people get in touch with you? 
Absolutely. So uh, please, if you want to reach out, the best way to do so is uh, they can just go to my website. It's called idqgroup.us. Again, that's idqgroup.us. Would love to hear from you all. Uh, whatever it is that you have on your mind, if you have a question, I'll be more than glad to receive uh, some of your comments. And we're here to support one another. And uh, because your success is my success. And we truly are one body because when one person hurts, we all hurt, first of all. And I think that's something that this pandemic has reminded us is a, about becoming of, of, of selflessness and, and how important it is, how interconnected we are yes. and how much we need one another. Exactly. I often say to people that it is physical distancing. It is not social distancing. We need each mm. other to be able to, to get through in relationships or at the core um, for our success. We have got to make sure that we're building our community and our tribe. And you are such a gift and blessing to me. And I'm honored to call you friend and my brother from another mother and that you are a part of my tribe. And so thank you for saying yes to being on the show. You all, this is again, just a taste of the brilliance of Mateo. And so again, this has been an episode of the Tapestry Podcast. I am Dr. Francois Booker-Drew. And to reach out to me, you can hit me up at info at drfrancois.com or go to my website at drfrancois.com to learn more about the things that I am doing and ways in which I can support your efforts. Thanks again.